It's time for From the Short Grass with Trey Shap, a golf podcast for those who love golf, struggle with golf, and just like to enjoy the outdoors and fellowship with friends, all while chasing a ball around trying to put it in a four and a quarter inch diameter hole. From the Short Grass is brought to you by Stevens Incorporated, an independent financial services firm with the freedom to focus on what matters most. Blackman Auctions. For over 80 years, better auctions have always been Blackman Auctions. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotels. We partner with you to deliver high yield results by managing, developing, and investing in top quality hospitality assets. And now, from the short grass, here is your host, Trey Shap. Welcome to another edition of From the Short Grass. I am your host, Trey Shap. It's Masters Week, one of the best weeks of the year when it comes to professional golf and golfers in general. It's a place that is difficult to get to for a player and for a spectator. In this episode of From the Short Grass, as I sit down with the University of Central Arkansas Athletic Director, Brad Teague, he's going to give you an up-close look at Augusta National because he is a hole monitor at Augusta the entire week. Yes, he takes a week of vacation to be a hole monitor at Augusta National, and there's a lot of perks that go with being a hole monitor besides the $11 meal money you get every day. More about that a little bit later. Rose Zhang wins the Augusta National Women's Amateur. Rose went into the event as the favorite. She has been the number one ranked amateur in the world for the last 133 weeks, and it was a tournament that included a strong international field. 44 of the top 50 ranked amateurs in the world were competing. The top 30 players in ties after two rounds at Champions Retreat qualified for the final round at Augusta National. Zhang went into that final round with a nice lead, but had to win on the second playoff hole. What will happen this week at Augusta National? Only time will tell. I want to tell you about one of our great sponsors, Blackman Auctions. Since 1938, better auctions have always been Blackman Auctions. Coming up, Southern Oaks Country Club, previously named Foxwood Country Club, is going to be auctioned off. It was first opened in 1971, located just minutes from downtown Jacksonville and the Little Rock Air Force Base. This auction will take place next Friday, April the 14th at 9 a.m., 701 Foxwood Drive in Jacksonville. We're back with Dr. Brad Teague after this. Heading to El Dorado to check out some live music or to play Mystic Creek? Stay at the Haywood, the only boutique hotel in the middle of downtown and the Murphy Arts District. If you are spending a weekend in Hot Springs, make plans now at the Marriott Courtyard close to Lake Hamilton and Oakwan. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotel Group manages both of these fine properties and you will rest easy knowing that your every need is taken care of. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotels on the web at bphotels.com. This is Thomas Blagman with Blagman Auctions. On Friday, April 14th, we are auctioning without reserve an 18-hole golf course in Jacksonville, Arkansas. This 145-acre property includes an 8,000-square-foot clubhouse, two equipment buildings, and a pool. The property has the very nice Foxwood subdivision to the south and a 6,000-acre WMA to the north. Less than 15 minutes from downtown Little Rock. Once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to buy land like this in the city. For more information, go to BlackmanAuctions.com. Since 1938, better auctions have always been Blackman Auctions. At Stevens, our philosophy is to invest every dollar as if it were our own. To seize opportunity. To anticipate rather than react. To deliver constant focus in an ever-changing world. And to pursue the objectives of our clients in order to help them reach their financial goals. A proven history of helping companies and individuals. Stevens, member NYSE SIPC. Welcome back to this edition of From the Short Grass. I am your host, Trey Schapp. The University of Central Arkansas announced Dr. Brad Teague as its Director of Athletics in 2007. And since that time, he has accrued several vacation days or PTO days, if you will. What does he use them for the first full week of April? Well, now he uses them to travel to Augusta National, where he is a hole monitor at the Masters. On the tee. Dr. Brad Teague. Dr. Brad Teague, thanks for joining me on From the Short Grass. How are things here at the University of Central Arkansas? 
Hello, Trey. You know, uh, things are well. Things are well. You know, there's always something going on in, in college athletics. So we, we've had our share of ups and downs already through the winter, and uh, we're looking forward to a great spring. You know, of course, baseball beat Vanderbilt and softball beat Arkansas. So it's been been fun so far for the spring sports. I was going to say, yeah, your spring sports are doing pretty well, aren't they? They are. They are. We've got really good coaches who are good people who bring in great young men and women to our program so that's a good recipe for success and and we're seeing that you brought in a new golf coach austin austin oh oh yeah that's right. just uh just a f- fantastic golfer in his own right but wow. i think even a better person he's he's incredible he really is from benton as mm-hmm. everybody in arkansas knows that and uh was the top amateur here for a long time right and went to purdue uh, out of high school played four years there uh, was a coach there, and then he went to Rutgers for a year, then back to Purdue for four years, and then we, we got him. And he is uh, quite the golfer. <laughs> You're right. Now, our previous head coach was a professional golfer, too. It's just different when you see those guys play. Just the ball just travels differently, you know, off the club head. And, and – uh, it's it's fun to watch. I played with him a couple times. When you're an athletic director and you're looking for your golf coach, do you go out and play with them? No, but it, it's interesting because uh, you know our past well the three co- golf coaches we've had since I've been here they they were all great golfers. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, it's probably a pre- prerequisite. You better be pretty good at golf if you want to coach it. You know, you got to know a little bit you about, know it, right? about it, right? Uh, but our past two, of course, our current one and the previous one were, were you know pro type golfers. So. Uh, they were they're absolutely stellar on the golf course. When did you first pick up a golf club? I didn't play growing up. I mean, I, my parents didn't play. We were not country club folks. Grew up in Jackson, Mississippi, and there's I re- some good golf courses there. Th- now. There are some good golf courses, and I never played the country club or Annandale or any of those growing up. Knew about them, but didn't really know much about golf. I was a baseball player growing up. Played basketball in high school. Um, if I played golf, it was infrequently probably three times growing up and I remember being terrible I mean just couldn't hit it anywhere and everything went right and it just wasn't fun and it was a municipal course maybe in Jackson and the roots everywhere I just thought you know this this isn't very fun so get to college at Delta State and uh, they have a, a university golf course and it was free for students so I started playing a little bit but my senior year we we were, the baseball team lived all in the same residence hall across campus, close to the cafeteria there, and then the golf course was across the highway, it, a small highway. So my senior year, they moved the baseball team from this residence hall to the one across the highway, right on the golf course. Oh wow! So yeah. we played we played as much as possible when we weren't doing baseball. So on Sundays, for sure, I remember going out every Sunday and in it, season. This was in season, yeah. Now we didn't play on Sundays. Okay, then. back then, yeah. You'd have a you play Friday and a doubleheader Saturday, right. so you're off Sunday. So we would go and play golf on Sunday, and I still wasn't very good, but I was getting better and starting trying to figure out how to hit it straight. And then after that, I stayed in Cleveland at Delta State for four years, working in the alumni and foundation office, and you you needed to play golf, you know, to raise money. And then when I moved to Oxford, Mississippi, I found a group that was better than my skill level and so playing with them just made me better and so I got better and better and we played at the the university course at Ole Miss and then we played at a place called Kirkwood National up in Holly Springs Mississippi just 30 miles north of Oxford and that was a really nice course Mm -hmm. and then I was then they started taking me to Old Waverly so one of the best that's I played a lot of rounds at Old Waverly and that is one of the best clubs in the world, no doubt. Have you been able to get back and play Mossy Oak? That uh, Mr. Bryan built that before he passed away uh, there so just yes. north of Old Waverly? We do a fundraising golf trip every summer for the UCA golf teams, men's and women's golf teams. So we'll, we'll go a drivable trip one year and then a flight the next. So two years ago, we went to Old Waverly. And so we stayed on, on the ground right. in Old Waverly. In the cottages. In the cottages. And we played Old Waverly the first day. We played Mossy Oak the second. And then Old Waverly the third came home. So it's a great trip. Last year, we went to Vail, Colorado. Oh, wow. Decent courses out there, by the way, Trey. And then <laughs> this year, we're going to Branson. So we'll, we'll, we kind of switch off. And I think next year, we're talking about probably going – uh, Michigan or Wisconsin, something up in Whistling there. Whistling Straits, maybe? Been, we've been to Straits before. In fact, wow. 2017, we took our group, and this, this is usually 30 to 40 folks who go with us. Uh, we went to Whistling Straits and played all four courses and then went over and watched the Friday round of the U.S. Open at Aaron Hills, and, and Kepka won that one. But 
uh, that was a fun a fun trip. And it, what was fun is so our our UCA bus picks us up at the airport in Chicago, and we drive up through Milwaukee up to um, Kohler. Kohler, thank you. Up to Kohler. I was going to say Sheboygan, but it's yeah, Kohler's the smaller town outside of it. And then we we drive over and watch the U.S. Open. So as we're going in. You don't just drive the bus up to the front gate. I was going to say, you know, yeah, they, how did they, you do that? Well, we talked our way into driving this bus, and it said University of Central Arkansas all over it. We drove it straight up to the front gate and dropped us right off. And the strange thing was we get off, and security's like, well, wait a minute. This isn't one of our buses because security actually happens back at the bus stop 30 miles away. And before you get on the bus, you've gone through the security right. gates and the metal detectors. We didn't have any of that, and they just said, all right, just come on in. So oh, wow. <laughs> we walked right in. <laughs> the problem was when the round was over and we were all gathering, our bus driver could not get back in this time. And so we had to funnel through a shuttle bus 30 miles away to meet him. Anyway, it worked out, but that was, that was fun. That had to have been some kind of trip, though. It was a great trip, yeah. It was a wonderful trip. In fact, the um, Black Wolf Run courses there at Kohler, mm-hmm. especially the river course, is as nice as anything around. I mean, maybe in the world. And they've played a women's professional event there. Of course, the Straits, just the views and the yeah, the, of the Lake, Lake Michigan. There. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible. When you go to Branson this summer, what courses are you looking at there? Payne's we, Valley, yeah. Buffalo Ridge. So we, we go on a Sunday and we play Ozark National the first day. The next day we get up and we play the the mountaintop, which is a par three course. Mm-hmm. That afternoon we'll play Tigers course, Payne Valley. And then on Tuesday we're going to play Buffalo Ridge and come home. So it's just two nights, three and a half rounds. It's uh, a lot of golf, good time. I got to play Payne's Valley last year. Okay. And it is phenomenal. So tell, this 19th hole, I, I can't understand. what, what it's, it's well, like, Okay, so you, you play your 18. Yes. And then you've got one final hole. It's the 19th hole, and it's basically an island green. Um, you get to it with a crosswalk, and they give you one shot. If you make a hole in one, you get like $1,000 to spend in the pro shop. You get a signed flag by Tiger Woods. You get all this stuff. They got a bar off to the left if you know, you're just feeling it. But it's a 19th hole, and then you take your cart, and you got to wind up through the waterfall in the hillside to get back up to the top where the clubhouse is. Okay, so you don't go to the green. You're just – Hitting a ball to the green. You no, yeah, yeah. You, no, you, you go and out? finish out oh, yeah, okay. if you want yeah. to. Oh, wow. And so there's a bar there. If, if your ball makes the green. If your ball didn't make the green, yeah. then you can just say, okay, I'm done. I'm done, yeah. But you get one chance to make the hole in one. Okay. Wow. Well, no pressure. We, we've got 40 going. So 40? 40 going. On, on, the, on the UCA bus. That's right. I want to see that bus pull up to the top of. That's right. We, we, <laughs> we will be there. <laughs> It'll be great. That's awesome. Tell me the story about how you got involved with being a marshal at one of the most prestigious tournaments on the planet, the Masters. Sure. Well, uh, I'm, I'm a golf fan, of course. And, you know, you always want to go to the Masters. And, and I was telling you before we started recording that I started going in 2004 when I was the athletic director at, at Delta State. A good friend of mine, Billy Now, had been going. He's the mayor of Cleveland, Mississippi, by the way. He had been going since the 70s every year. And I just had always said I want to go. So we, he had a ticket broker. We got Monday practice rounds. We went 2004. The next year, we decided to go Wednesday to see the, the Par 3 tournament. Mm-hmm. So, so we went. The next year, we got invited. Somehow he got tickets on a Thursday, so I got to go. The next year, we had Sunday tickets, but the Saturday round had gotten – basically rained out so we got to see two rounds on sunday this would have been probably oh six yeah because phil phil won in oh oh four and oh six and ten so i had basically seen in those four years almost everything you could see a, a, a thursday round a sunday round a practice round and the par three tournament so i'd gotten the experience i didn't go again until 2013 and then i went again in 2016 just some friends here that wanted to go and about 2016 so my 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 neighbor, my neighbor Scotty Bell, and he started be, uh, being a gallery guard. Mm-hmm. This would have been in in probably 2011, and he got in because longtime police force our assistant chief here was Glenn Stacks, and Glenn Stacks was a gallery guard, and everybody knew there was almost like a legend in town. He was a gallery guard, 
uh, and on campus. And Scotty Bell asked Glenn Stacks how he could become a gallery guard. And, and Glenn said, well, I just put a recommendation in for you. you. You'll need to submit some kind of application. And, you know, it, you may, may get it. You may never get it. But if you get it, it usually takes three or four years. And about three or four years, Scotty Bell was selected 2011. Wow. So about 2016, the last time I went, I came home to my wife and I said, you know, our kids are getting old enough now. I think I want to apply for this. And so I told her to Scott, be a gallery to guard. To be a gallery guard. And I what said, was her reaction? She said, sure. I mean, if, if that's what you want to do, go for it. And so I submitted the application, never heard anything back. Scotty sent a recommendation, never heard anything back. A um, couple of years go by. It, this may have been, I think it was COVID. So they had canceled the tournament mm-hmm. in April and they decided they're going to play it in the fall. And somewhere in there, I said, Scotty, let's, let's make another run at it because I'm guessing there's some folks who don't want to work there anymore. Right. Sure. Because who knew what was that? That couldn't. That couldn't work there. And so we submitted the request, and the head of the gallery guards immediately writes him back and says, well, I've never seen this before. Send me, send me that information again. And so we sent, and we sent the information, and the next day I get a call from the head of the gallery guards and just wanted to chat, wanted to know what I did. And he, he had been to Conway before, and he was telling me stories about being here in the 60s, and they'd gone up through the Ozarks and whatever. And he's just a real chatty guy and friendly guy. And he said, well, let me tell you, this is now January of 21, and they're playing the tournament in April of 21. Mm-hmm. And he said, you know, we're full right now, but if something happens, I'll let you know. Uh, I got your stuff. And as soon as we have an opening, you know, I've, there's several on the waiting list, of course. But as soon as we have an opening, I'll, I'll get you in there. Maybe this year, maybe next, whatever. And I said, sounds great. So at March, about, about this time in March in 2021, we're down at our basketball tournament in Houston, Texas. And I get a text from the head gallery guard. And he says, hey, you didn't respond to your email. And I'm like, oh, hold on now. What do you, Whoa. about what? Yeah. He said, you didn't fill out the form. You were selected for this year. You didn't fill it out. And I said, I, I, I don't, sorry, sir. I don't have the email. Can you send it to me again? Yeah. He immediately sends it to me. I fill it out and I got selected. So I'm thinking, all right, I'm going. I called Dr. Davis and said, I'm going to be out, you know, every April for a week. No problem. Um, just take your vacation time. Absolutely. And I was just thinking, you know, I'm new. They're going to put me on some obscure hole. I'll be on number five where nobody ever walks. You know, I'll be somewhere where I'll never see anybody. And that's fine. I don't I don't really care. You're on the course. I'm on the course. So I get my packet, and it says hole 17. And I'm like, whoa. Well, that's – wow. Yeah. 17 is a good hole. And what I liked about it was – First of all, it's right in all the action. I mean, you got number seven next to you. You got 15 next to you. You can see 16 from the tee box easily. Uh, at 17, you got 18 tee box. You can see number eight tee box. I mean, there's just a lot around it. And I was like, this is this is great. I'm, I'm real happy that this is the hole. So don't know much else. I just know I'm supposed to be there at 6.30 a.m. on Monday morning. And I, our, our supervisor says, you need to be at the gallery guard shack, you know, the, the big warehouse at 6.30 a.m. and be on the 17 tee box at 7 a.m. and we'll get our instructions. So I show up and there's 24 of us for hole 17. And they put you in pairs. Mm-hmm. And there are nine stations around the hole. And you just rotate every half day. You rotate to the next station. So at the end of seven days, you've done most of the stations twice and a, and a few of them once and uh, this gentleman that had been doing it a long time just took me as his partner and we went and sat down on the upper fairway on monday and you know by tuesday i'm on the green and wednesday i'm on the right fairway and then i'm on a crosswalk and you know all the way around and this gentleman had said i picked our spot because we're going to be on the green on sunday oh wow and i was like well that's that's really cool you know a lot of fun so um the, the the issue with 17, there's a couple of them for me. The fun part is everybody wants to know where the Eisenhower tree was. So you have, yeah, you it's have not to there know. anymore. No, it's gone. <laughs> it, Ice storm of 2013 took yeah. it out, right? So they want to know exactly where that was and how far out in the fairway did it come, you know. And I'm sure we embellished a lot of that stuff. But it's, it sounded good. <laughs> right. And, and um, the, the other problem is, Trey, you, you've been there. So you know how uphill this yes. hole is and really nobody gets it from tv you cannot tell it does not do the course justice right it, it's unbelievable and and 17 is that tee shot is way up a hill i mean there's even dechambeau isn't hitting it 280 i mean it's just way uphill it's just hard to 
get it that far. And then even the shot to the green is uphill. So as a patron and as a gallery guard, you really don't get to see much of the hole because it is so far uphill. If you're down at the ropes, you can't even see up past the fairway. Mm -hmm. If you're at the green, the green's also elevated. So when I work the green, I never saw anybody putt. I never saw really what's going on because they're all elevated up above us. And so it's really a terrible spectator hole mm -hmm. at the end of the day. So the other problem with hole 17, when you live not in Georgia and you have to fly commercial flights home, you can't get out on Sunday night. You got to wait till Monday. You got to wait till Monday. So what I didn't realize, though, by the way, when I first got the gig in 21 was that I was going to be on 17, first of all. And so I went ahead and booked a commercial flight out. The last flight out was 7 p.m. Oh, no. And so I booked that commercial flight. So I get there Monday morning, and we're getting the rules and what we have to do. And then he says, and remember, we're also responsible for the playoff. And I thought, uh-oh. <laughs> I was thinking I was going to be able to just dart out of there when the last group came through and make my flight. And so what happens is that in the playoff, they play 18 and 10, mm -hmm. 18 and 10, 18 and 10. So when the last group comes through hole number 10, hole number 10 gets to go home. And they're not going to make them wait around for the playoff. Y'all go to set. So go to 10. So 17 goes to 10. Exactly. Oh. So I, I hear that. And somewhere during the week, I had enough courage to go up to our supervisor and say, hey, any chance I can, like, get out of here by 6 o'clock? I mean, I understand. I just didn't know. I didn't know what hole I was going to be on. I went ahead and booked my flight, and he's like, no problem. We'll, we'll cover you. No problem. Right. So that worked out. So I asked the, the head gallery guard person, can I have a hole earlier in the round? Um, my, my neighbor, Scotty Bell, works number nine. And I said, number nine would be great to work with him because we carpool. But if not, just something earlier. And he said, I'll see what I can do. And I get my packet in 2022, last year. I'm still on 17. <laughs> so <laughs> so it didn't work out he said look I, I couldn't make it work this year but next year i will i will figure it out for you so do you have your packet for this year? i yet? have my packet for this year i'm hole number two. Oh, which i think is awesome yes that's a great hole a par five yes and that green you see so much oh, going on you, yeah you know, the tee shot on three on number eight the green on seven and then all the shots coming into two from up the hill now. yeah i mean it's just ideal so i, I love it and when everybody's down on number two, I got the rest of the round I can go watch. Exactly. I can go. I can. Uh, I can set my chair on wherever seven green at the first of the day, and then and no one's going to mess with it. Nobody messes with your chairs as yeah. long as you have your name on it and you've stuck it there before anybody else. It's your chair for the rest of the day. Yeah. No matter where you go. And uh, I believe the last double eagle on that hole was by Louis Ustazen. That's correct. That's correct. Somewhere around 12, yeah. It was the last day as well, I believe. It was, it was on was Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, that may have been Adam Scott's win. It was, you know, Swartzel, somebody win. Yeah. yeah. What was it like for you the first time you ever stepped on it, and then what's it like now being yeah. a gallery guard? So the first time I ever stepped on it, the only thing I wanted to do was start on number one and walk all 18 holes in order, and I did that. And that's that was really neat after watching it so much on TV to actually – be on the course. Of course, you're you're, you're walking the gallery mm -hmm. um, on the side, so you're not on the course. By the way, I didn't say this. We don't get paid. We're volunteers. Uh, we have to buy. Our, we we have the privilege of purchasing <laughs> at face value practice round tickets. Okay. They do give us a uniform. They give you green golf shirts, a green pullover, and a yellow hat. And then you bring your khakis, and that's your uniform. So we do get that. And then we get $11 a day meal money. Wow. It's a weird number, 11. And you think, well, that's not a lot, except that sandwiches are $1.50. I was going to say, so they're yeah, not expensive there. You, you can eat a lot of sandwiches for 11 so <laughs> yeah. that's, that's not bad. Here's the payment. We all get to go back in May and play. We get to play Augusta National. Yes. Can I be that's, a gallery guard? That's why everybody wants to do it. Yes. So I played it twice. You get to go back in May. All merchandise is half price, whatever's left, but still a lot of good stuff. And you get to play the big course once, and then you get to play the par three course unlimitedly as much as you want. And they feed you. On that day? On that day. That's right. You get and so everybody gets to play that day. That's right. So when you went back to play, where did you start out? Did you start out on the main course yes. or did you start on the part okay, three? Okay, so the first year, which would have been May of 21, uh, Scotty Bell, my neighbor, had a connection to a guy that had worked there forever, and they get priority times. Mm -hmm. And he always wanted to tee off first, 7 a.m. So we were off at 7 a.m., 
And he said, my goal is always to play this in under three hours. And we played it in two hours and 55 minutes. That's hoofing it. That's hoofing it. The problem with that was I, I, I never got a chance just to sit and look around. I mean, we were, we were going, going, mm-hmm. going, going. That was fine and fun. We were done by 10, which meant we had a lot of time to play the par three course. Unfortunately, it was closed that year. Oh. Yeah. I don't know why. So the next year, we decided let's don't play at 7 a.m. Let's try to get like a 10 o'clock tea time. And we did. We got a 10 o'clock tea time. Perfect. They were renovating the par 3 course. It so is, you haven't played it yet? Never played it. It's, it was totally renovated. So it's brand new. Well, this May, you'll get to play, I get it. To play it. I hope if they let you. That's the thing. You don't, until you get there, first of all, it's not guaranteed that you're going to be a play date at all. And it's certainly not guaranteed you're going to get the par 3 well, course. Well, it could wash it out. I mean, you could have thunderstorms that could. day too, and right? Some, and some do, yeah. For two consecutive weeks, Monday through Thursday, they have all the volunteers get to play. Weekends is for members. Whatever date we get, we I think our options are Monday and Wednesday of the second week. But what's fun is there's a caddy on every green mm-hmm. to help to wreck the bunkers and then help you line your putts up because you could be there forever. I mean, it truly sure. is amazing putting those greens. But the caddies get to play the very last day, and they get to play all day. It's not 18 holes. It's as much as they want to play. Wow. And, they, and we hear stories about how that day goes. But they're the last group that plays. And then the course is closed from the from end the of summer. May through October. Mm-hmm. It is only open October through May. What'd you shoot? 86, 85. Hey, improvement. Improvement. My goal is to break 80, but it's just different. You know, yeah. you're nervous. I mean, it's just different. You know, everything is just heightened. Um, it's hard to putt. Best golf course outside of Augusta yeah. National that you've ever played. Pinehurst number two. I had a I shot a 73 there, so I really am fond of that one. Oh, you're a stick. Yeah. Well, I didn't know that. Sometimes. Kohler was really nice. Didn't play well there. It's just hard. What's funny is, so we played those four courses, and the day before, we had played uh, Black Wolf Run, not the river course, but whatever the other one's called, and that caddy that day, I liked it, and I shot like a 73 that day, and he's like, I want you for my round tomorrow at Whistling Strait, at the Straits. He said, love to. So I get there, and I'm warming up. And he, he says, listen, I want you to play the plates today. And I said, what, what is that? He said, that's where they played the, the PGA. And I said, no. <laughs> what, I mean, like 7,500 yards? He said, it's not as bad as you think. I mean, most of it, it you know, there's sure. downhill. Downhill there's wind, and stuff, you know. it'll roll out. And I said, okay. And so here I am. I'm playing the plates, and then the rest of my group, they're all up here on the whites, you know. And they're 100 yards in front of me every hole. And after about 15 holes, I was just beaten down, mm. worn out. Mm. It, was, it was rough. I should not have done that. All right. A fantasy foursome. You and three others, living or deceased, that you could play around a golf with, who would it be? Oh, wow. So prior to the live, I would have said Phil Mickelson. N- not as much a fan anymore. And I, I really – you got to do what you got to do, I guess, Phil. But I don't know. I just yeah. – Disappointed in him. Uh, I, I like Tiger. You know, that would be quite – fun to play with tiger um my father would be in that group and a fourth would be uh, boo ferris my college baseball coach who was in the red sox hall of fame how about that yeah he, he was an incredible man awesome yeah that's awesome dr teague thanks so much for your time thank you trey and uh have fun at augusta i will i will it's early mornings it's long days but it's you can't it's beat worth it. it it's it's the right place to be Traveling to Fayetteville to watch a game? Forgot to book a room for the night? Beachwood Pinnacle Hotel Group has you covered. Stay where the fans stay. Staybridge Suites is just south of Baumwalker Stadium and is an all-suite hotel within walking distance of Baumwalker, Bud Walton, and Razorback Stadium. Or you could stay at the Comfort Inn and Suites with newly remodeled rooms throughout the entire property. Find them on the web at bphotels.com, Beachwood Pinnacle Hotels. This is Thomas Blagman with Blagman Auctions. On Friday, April 14th, we are auctioning without reserve an 18-hole golf course in Jacksonville, Arkansas. This 145-acre property includes an 8,000-square-foot clubhouse, two equipment buildings, and a pool. The property has the very nice Foxwood subdivision to the south and a 6,000-acre WMA to the north. Less than 15 minutes from downtown Little Rock. Once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to buy land like this in the city. For more information, go to BlackmanAuctions.com. Since 1938, better auctions have always been Blackman Auctions. That will 
do it for this edition of From the Short Grass. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotel Group, one of our great sponsors here on From the Short Grass. Check them out online, bphotels.com. They've got a great list of hotels that they manage, and that's where you want to stay, Beachwood Pinnacle Hotels. Remember, when you find your ball mark on the green, fix it and a couple of more. And I hope to see you soon from the short grass. You've been listening to From the Short Grass, a weekly podcast dedicated to the game of golf. This has been a presentation of the Buzz Radio Network.